Why not bring to vote, by referendum, both independence and a potential Spanish government proposal for Catalonia? This was the Parliament Speaker's suggestion this very morning. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. Finding an agreement for a referendum on self-determination remains a central topic in Catalan politics. Today, the speaker claimed that it's the only way out of the current crisis. But the Spanish government thinks the opposite, that it won't fix the problem. On our show today, we'll speak about this and also about dictator Francisco Franco's exhumation, which is closer than ever. Inequalities pose more risk to social fracture than the self-determination debate, according to President Kim Torra. For him and the Parliament Speaker, there shouldn't be any problem in holding a referendum. But Madrid sees it completely differently. The pro-independence movement has its work cut out to persuade the Spanish government to agree to a binding referendum on self-determination. This was the Parliament Speaker's message this morning during a breakfast hosted by a political platform. A few days after the Spanish President, Pedro Sánchez, offered Catalonia a vote on its self-government within Spain, Roger Turen challenged them to go ahead with it, but including the independence option. Aquest és el repte que té el president Sánchez. Si té una proposta, que la sotmeti a votació, conjuntament amb la possibilitat de sotmetre a votació la república, la independència. O és que el senyor Sánchez té por a preguntar als ciutadans? At the very same time, the Spanish public administration minister was saying the opposite in a radio interview. Merechel Batet, who is Catalan, said that a referendum wouldn't fix the problem because citizens have already had their say in several votes and the issue remains. According to Batet, a referendum is not allowed by the Spanish constitution. It is the same argument that the former People's Party executive also used to reject a vote. In a busy morning in Catalan and Spanish politics, Pedro Sánchez hit back at accusations in some media that he had plagiarized his PhD thesis. He said he will make his work public and will give an explanation in Congress at the request of the People's Party and Ciutadans. The main unionist party in the Catalan chamber also complained today about some 20 Catalan schools beginning classes yesterday with building work that is still unfinished. A Ciutadans MP rejected the government's explanations. El senyor conseller d'Ensenyament s'ha dedicat a culpar els 155 i a les pluges. És a dir, tenim a l'Espanya ens roba i ara més tenim les pluges ens roben. Yesterday, the Catalan president, Kim Torra, said that education was a priority. And today, in a lower income neighborhood in the Barcelona area, he claimed social fracture is a risk due to inequalities rather than a political debate. The political arena in Catalonia and Spain has been especially complicated because of the imprisonment of politicians. And in Brussels, they are aware of it. The Catalan delegation in the European capital invited the president of the Committee of the Regions to the National Day celebrations. He joined delegate in Brussels, Meritxe Sarrit, who is in exile herself due to her role in last year's referendum. They both agreed that having politicians in jail doesn't help to solve the Catalan conflict. But I am also firmly convinced that a conflict like the one we live in Catalonia cannot be resolved by par la police ni par l'armée et que l'emprisonnement de femmes et d'hommes politiques pour les raisons qui ont été soulevées en Espagne ne contribue pas du tout à une solution. Dictator Francisco Franco's remains will be moved out of his mausoleum in the Madrid region soon. If all goes as planned. The Spanish Congress passed today a law amendment to make this possible. All Catalan parties voted in favor except for Unionist Ciudadans and the People's Party. They both said such a move is not urgent at all, 43 years after the dictator died. Meanwhile, pro independence forces urged the Spanish cabinet to also cancel all Francoist prison and death sentences. Es decir, el Parlamento de Cataluña, por unanimidad, ha aprobado la anulación de las sentencias que se substanciaron en territorio catalán. Moving on to technology, applied to health. 
One of Catalonia's most outstanding public hospitals has inaugurated a new intensive care unit, equipped with the most cutting-edge high-tech. And those who've used it already have good things to say. In the medical world, technology is key. Barcelona's Baix de Ebron Hospital has unveiled a new state-of-the-art smart intensive care unit to replace its old one. The unit comes with more advanced equipment connected to a program that integrates clinical data with patient safety. This allows a faster response to patients in need. Because this smart UC incorporates also the new technologies in what is the better attention to all these patients who are critical. All patient info is linked to a smart screen where hospital staff can monitor their progress. When there is a problem clinic grave, for example, pues, eh, un malalt pateix una aturada cardíaca, el mateix edifici is capaç de posar les condicions perquè nosaltres puguem atendre correctament el pacient. A blue light outside the patient's room warns if they're about to enter a critical situation and the doors open automatically allowing easier access to them. The unit expects to attend up to around 2,200 patients each year. With this new technology, it will be able to do so in a more agile way than what was possible with the previous intensive care unit. Yo creo que la mejoría es evidente, es evidente, 100% evidente, tanto para los familiares, pacientes como enfermeros. Special lighting also mimics the natural cycle of day and night. Each patient also gets their own room, more private space, and they're always under the watchful eye of medical professionals so their loved ones know that they're in safe hands. With warm weather and still more music festivals to come, summer is alive and well in Catalonia. And what better place to see this than the Marcata Musica Viva de Vic? The Marcat de Musica Viva de Vic festival, named after the town in central Catalonia where it takes place, runs until Sunday. This brings Vic four full days of music of all kinds for the 30th edition of the event. On Wednesday, the series of concerts kicked off at the town's Teatro Atlantida, as well as presentations from officials and a revisiting of the event's 30-year history. Opening night also included different performances from various singers and musicians. That very night, singer-songwriter Marc Parrot presented his new CD and project called Rafugi. This is designed to be a different, more intimate experience. It was created to be performed inside uh, your tent, which has the capacity for only 50 people. The festival will also include names like the unique rhythm project Basket Beat, as well as Catalan band Els Amics de les Arts. This as well as names like Alessi Arena, Nyandu and Tony Sparks. So, if you want to enjoy the latest bout of warm weather before the fall, along with varied music and a change in scenery in a typical Catalan town, head over to the Marcat de Musica Viva de Vic. To finish off our show today, we leave you with more music, that of the band from Barcelona, Macaco, and its Latin and rumba rhythms. Check it out and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Siendo mi capital, que los tribunales no juzguen a los distintos, que sus palabras no las guarde el olvido, que todo sea nada, yo sea suficiente, que tu abrazo arranque los lastres de mi mente. One move, pretty big, moviéndose, and the world, pretty big, hombre, 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 pretty big, hombre,